Alright, so last video we cooked up, or really cooked up is maybe too strong a word, we just laid out the ground rules for what makes a vector space. And you know you need a set of vectors, you need a field of scalars, these are just good old fashioned numbers, frequently we use the real numbers, and when you sum vectors you need to get another vector in return. The order in which you add vectors should not matter whether you're adding two or three. Um, there should be a zero vector which multiplies by any scalar to be zero. Every vector should have an opposite which adds to the zero vector. Any number times any vector should also yield a vector. You should be able to distribute scalars across vectors, distribute uh, them in, both, in two ways, one a scalar times two vectors and the other two scalars times a vector. You should also be able to multiply two scalars towards a vector in any way, which is to say if you multiply the two scalars first times the vector, that would be the same as a scalar times the scalar multiple of the vector. And uh, there should be a one vector, just a number, which multiplies by every vector to be that vector. And what we saw when we went through this example was, if you let your field of scalars be the real numbers, and if you let your vectors be the standard vectors with four entries, that this passes the test. However, here's what I want to show you. If you define your operations a little bit differently from the standard way, you can actually get something that's not in the vector space. So check it out. Uh, what if you define vector addition in the standard way, which is to say add two vectors component-wise, first component, second component, third component, fourth, and fourth component, fine. But what if instead you defined multiplication like so, which is to say multiply constant times vector, you get the constant times the first component, the constant times the second component, the constant times the third component, but the fourth component is always zero. My claim is that you're going to run into an issue here in terms of uh, one of these properties. And check it out. Let's check to see if this in fact is a vector space. I claim that it's not, but let's supply some proof as to whether it is or not. So let's look at the first claim. The first claim is that when you sum two vectors, you also get a vector. And this will work since we define addition in the standard way. In fact, every stipulation on the board here that relates only to addition would apply uh, would, would apply in this case because addition is the standard way. So uh, you would get the same thing no matter which order you added the things. You would get adding three things no matter which sequence in which you added them. You would still get the same result. Uh, five actually would be, five look only depends on addition, so that would hold as well because you know that for every vector there's going to be its opposite out there and that will sum to the zero vector. Uh, hey, what about four? Is there a zero vector? Let's check. Uh, well, we have the vector 0, 0, 0, 0. That's the natural choice for the zero vector. And what happens when you multiply that by a constant? Well, when you multiply by a constant, you get a, a first component, c times 0, second component, c times 0, third component, c times 0, the last component always 0. This will still be the zero vector, and that works. So any constant times the zero vector yields the zero vector back in return. Cool, that works. Uh, what about six? Is a constant times a vector still a vector? Uh, I claim it is, see? Because we know what a constant times a vector looks like, and this here is still a vector in R4. It happens to have a fourth component of zero, but note uh, that C times R vector is still in R vectors. And so we pass stipulation six. What about stipulation seven? If we take a constant and distribute it to a sum of vectors, is that going to be equal to a constant times the first plus a constant times the second? Uh, well, this would be a constant times u1 plus v1, u2 plus v2, u3 plus v3, u4 plus v4. Okay, and now what about uh, what would that be? I tell you what, let's just multiply that out. What would that be? That would be the first component would be CU1 plus CV1, then CU2 plus CV2, then CU3 plus CV3. And now remember, when we multiply by the fourth component, constant times vector, that turns out to be zero as we've defined our multiplication. Uh, is that equal to what's on the other side? Well, the other side is a constant times u plus a constant times v. So a constant times u would be cu1 
Cu2, Cu3, and zero. Because anytime you multiply a constant times a vector, you always get zero in that last component, the way that we've defined it. And whenever you multiply out here, Cv3 and zero, uh, check it out. In fact, these two things are equal because when we multiplied the constant through, we got what we got in the first three components was zero in the fourth. When we multiplied the constant through in the others, we had that zero in the fourth component and what we got in the others, and those in fact would add together. So stipulation seven holds. Uh, man, we're working our way all the way through here. I claim this is not a vector space. We're through seven stipulations and we're still looking to be working. What about stipulation eight? Uh, stipulation eight, does C plus K times a vector equal C times that vector plus K times that vector? Well, let's think about what the left-hand side is. The left-hand side is C plus K times V1, V2, V3, V4. And you know how that plays out because that's going to be C plus K times V1 and then C plus K times V2 c plus k times v3, but anytime you multiply a scalar times a vector, based on how we've defined multiplication, we're going to get a zero in that last place. Okay, what about on the right-hand side? On the right-hand side, we have, uh, let's see, we, we don't know if we're equal yet, but let's test. Uh, right-hand side, cv1, that's going to, or cv, that's going to be cv1, cv2, cv3, and zero, plus kv, that's going to be kv1, kv2, kv3, zero. And when you add those together, what do you get? Lo and behold, you get the same thing you had on the left-hand side because the top three components remain the same and the bottom component is zero. All right, what about stipulation nine? Man, we've made it all the way to this point and all of our stipulations are working. What about stipulation nine? This is when you multiply two constant times a vector, you should get the same thing as multiplying the constant times a vector times the other constant. So what if you had CK times V? You know what that is. That is just uh, CKV1, CKV2, CKV3, zero. Because anytime you multiply any scalar times a vector, you're gonna get zero in that last component based on how we define scalar multiplication. Uh, what about the other side? The other side is C times KV, and that would be, let's see if these are the same, C times, what is KV? KV1, KV2, KV3, and zero. And guess what? This works as well, right? Because you see when you distribute the C throughout, uh, you're still gonna end up with zero in the last place and you're gonna have those CKV1, CKV2, CKV3 all the way through. So for the first nine stipulations, this new way of multiplying scalar multiplication uh, seems to work, but let's check out property 10. Property 10 says that one times a vector should be the vector back in return. And let's take one times the vector, V1 through V4. What's that gonna be? That's going to be v1, v2, v3, 0. And herein lies a problem. Because v4 could have been anything. And when you multiply by 1, you don't get that same anything back in return in the fourth component. So in particular, multiplying a vector by 1 does not give you that vector back in return. And since we failed stipulation 10, we are not a vector space. Because to be a vector space, you have to satisfy all 10 stipulations. We don't satisfy here, so we're not a vector space. And something to think about here is the way in which you define your operations can affect whether or not you are a vector space.